Hello, I'm going to show you how to use WordPress today to do your final project. So what we have here is my website, which is like yours. It is using the 2016 WordPress theme. And I have it open in two tabs. The first is the front end of the website, and the second is the dashboard. You can get into the dashboard by just clicking on this uh, login link here and putting in the username and password um, that I provided you with. And I believe I put that, that information inside of the shared folder on Google as well, if you forget what it is. And of course, your website will be located at dreamco.org forward slash your name. Remember the .org, not .com. Uh, people get that confused a lot. So uh, your website will, will probably look similar to this. You might have some different things like... Uh, you might have that logo up here and that header that we put in you and, and have some page names here, which is fine. I'm just kind of starting from scratch to do all that over again so you see everything. Um, so what I'm going to start with is I've made uh, a new logo and a new header, and I've got sort of a theme idea for my site. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that stuff, create the pages, put some content on the pages, uh, show you how to do a little um, customization with this sidebar and the widgets and so on and so forth. So before I do that, let me go ahead and uh, open up a new tab here and go to um, a website called Lipsum.com. And this is where you can get uh, what's called Greek text, um, which is just fake text that you can put on a website. Now, I don't want you guys to use this fake text on your websites. I want you to have actual text on your websites uh, when you turn them in. But uh, since this is just a demo, I'm going to go ahead and give myself executive permission to use uh, fake text. Okay, so let's start out with going here to the dashboard. We're going to upload a logo. So I'm going to go under Appearance and Customize. And then we're in the Customization section. I can uh, go ahead and go under Site Identity and click, um, you know, right here I could type in information that would be what's called the site title and the tagline, which is this stuff right here. And I can turn that off by just clicking on this little uh, checkbox here. It'll go away. Of course, the screen on the right uh, updates to show you the latest changes you've made. Now, as far as the logo goes, I'm going to go ahead and click Select Logo. Uh, I can upload the file from my computer by clicking Upload Files, clicking on Select Files, and then uh, picking something from my computer. But I've already uploaded it to save time, so anything you already have uploaded is going to be in your media library. So if you click on media library, this is where everything is. This is my little logo that I made and uh, it's already been cropped and everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and click select. Oh, actually I have to recrop it. So here it is. Um, you can grab these little handles and do the cropping or you can skip cropping if you don't need to and go ahead and crop image. Now, as far as the size of the logo, I just made something that I thought would look about the right size right here. Uh, let me go into Photoshop and see if it's still there. I can tell you the size that it is. Uh, let's see. I got to look through a bunch of crazy stuff here. Uh, 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 logo, PSD. Okay. Image size. Looks like I made this one 284 pixels uh, wide by 102 high. Of course, with a resolution of 72, which is the resolution for the web. So. You can make it smaller than that or larger, whatever uh, works for you. So there's my, my logo. Uh, now I want to upload um, my header. So I'm going to click this back arrow to go back to the main customization page and then come down here to header image. And you can see my old header image is there. So I'm going to add a new image. Once again, I've already uploaded this. You know how to upload this kind of stuff. And remember that this is um, the header is supposed to be 1,200 pixels wide by 280 pixels high. So we'll go ahead and click select and crop. And then this one I can skip cropping on because I made it exactly the right size. And then there it is, the beautiful header, right? Okay, so I've got my logo and I've got my header. Let's go back to the customization section. Other things that we can do. Uh, well, you can go in here to your typography and uh, you can choose the kind of fonts that you want to use on your um, different sections of your page uh, by all these via all these drop downs here. You can go nuts on that stuff. Uh, you can 
make some fonts in here for your uh, theme and play around with that stuff. I'm not really going to mess with that because that's some experimentation you can do on your own uh, to play with. It's not really uh, something I want to take a lot of time with, but you can certainly do that and, and customize the look of your fonts. Um, for colors, uh, the background color is going to affect this area back here that you see behind the page. And so I can click select color. I can go ahead and choose any color I want and, you know, move my little uh, dot around in here to select the color. And then I can get a different shade of the color from moving up and down here. So let's get something. Uh, let's try and get a green that sort of matches the tone of the green in here. That was close enough. Okay, so I'll leave that. Um, your page background color is this right here. That's this white. I'll go ahead and leave that. This is your links. Uh, so anything that's a link is going to be uh, blue. Your text is black. And secondary text color would be sort of subheads. Um, I'll go ahead and leave that stuff. I think that works for me. You guys can play with whatever you want. Right. We already did the header image. For a background image, you can, of course, uh, select an image and it will tile. In other words, it will um, go ahead and uh, be copied over and over again in the background. Uh, here's the example I gave in class. If you have it tile, it just repeats over and over again. Um, you can have it not repeat, which means it just shows up once in this case right here. You could have a tile horizontally, which means it goes across this way, or a tile vertically, which means it goes across that way. You can see where the black is. You can have it so that it just sits in the background, and when you scroll up or down, it stays there. That's fixed, or it scrolls with you. Um, and if it's just a big picture, one big picture, you can have it sit up here on the left side of the page, in the center of the page, or on the right. So uh, I really don't need a background image for this, so I'm just going to hit Remove stick with my background color there. Um, as far as menus go, uh, you can decide the kind of menu that you want to use in here. We're going to go ahead and do that in the uh, specific menu area of WordPress. We're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, same with widgets. And you can set a static front page in here if you want, um, which will get rid of your blog posts. But once again, we'll do that in, in WordPress itself. So lots of functionality here. You can even change the theme, but of course we're all leaving it at 2016 as part of the assignment. So lots of functionality here that will help you set up the look and feel of your page. And when you're all done, don't forget to hit save and publish, and then click on this X to, to exit out of this section and go back to the WordPress dashboard. Now, of course, since we're in two tabs here, we can go back to, and once again, this is what the site used to look like. Go back to the front page and hit refresh. Okay, now we got something that looks a lot more fun. It looks like we got a sort of our own theme we're developing here. Now, let's address this issue of having the blog on the front page and getting rid of that and creating the uh, additional pages here. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the dashboard and um, we'll go under pages and we'll go all pages. And we'll see that we've just got uh, basically a home page there, right? So let's make some new pages and I'll make the new ones uh, like the ones that I told you guys uh, to make. Of course, those were just dummy page names and you can change them to anything you want. You don't have to use exactly the ones that I made. You can make page titles that are specific to whatever kind of site you're making. But I'll go ahead and use the ones that I, that I used before. So uh, there would be one called services. And, uh, you know, I'll just do myself a favor right here and get some of this lorem ipsum text this um, fake text here and go ahead and paste it in on each of these pages that I make just so it has some some text okay so this one's gonna be called services okay uh, I'm gonna make a new one by clicking the add new button and we'll call this one gallery and of course uh, I guess I wouldn't put any text here because this is gonna be some sort of an image gallery um, and then we'll add a new one called about. Okay, and we'll paste some fake content there. Remember, you guys are going to use real content. Don't give me this fake stuff. And then, of course, the contact page so people can get a hold of us. And I won't put anything there because we're going to put a, a contact form there. Now, of course, I'm hitting the publish button every time I, I make a page. Now, of course, when you make all these pages, uh, if you go back to your website, you see we just have the home page there. Um, and you hit refresh, uh, 
the, the default for WordPress should be to, to show those pages up. But if they don't show, for those pages to show up, if they don't show up, what you can do is in the back end here, uh, the dashboard, you go to appearance and menus and um, make sure that this button is checked right here, both of these buttons, that you have a primary menu and then you automatically add new top level pages to the menu. Now you can see that all my pages are here, right? Uh, and of course you can move the order of these pages around just by clicking on them and dragging them around like this and then hitting save menu and that will update the the order in which your pages appear uh, on this page here in other words the way that they appear horizontally now i do have one thing that i have to do which is currently my home page is actually just the blog so i have to make a new home page so that i can set that to be the front page of the site and get rid of the blog so uh, i'll go back to my dashboard uh, i'll go back to the pages section and click add new and believe it or not i'll, I'll make a new home page and I'll just put some fake text in here. Okay, and I'll hit publish. Now, to get rid of, you know, if I if I went and I previewed this on the um, on the website, we now see two home pages. The the latest one was added right down here at the end. This, of course, is the blog. So I want to get rid of that blog and make it so that this is the the home page. So what you do is you go under uh, settings. And then reading and uh, it says that your front page displays either your latest post or a static page so let's click a static page and then let's select uh, the second home choice which would be the one that um, that I made and then we'll hit uh, save changes now you may not have to do this um, a number of you most of you probably have your page links already set up because we set them up in class the other day I'm just kind of going over how this step works. So now when I hit refresh, uh, sure enough, it shows home, at, it shows the actual home page uh, as the home page, but I still have these two links here to home because this was set up in my menus. So if I go back here and go to appearance and menus, you can see there's the two homes, right? If you want to get rid of a page on your menu, you just click this arrow to open it up and hit remove. Then you can take the real home page and drag it up to the top and hit save menu. Now when we go back here and hit refresh, we're going to have just the one home button there and then all of the other pages. And of course you click on any of these, it'll take you to that page and on most of these pages I just have that uh, fake content, right? Okay, so let's see what we want to do on these pages. We want to add some content in here. So um, on the services page, what I'm going to do is just add an image for each one of these pages. But you, of course, can add multiple images. You can add um, music or videos, whatever you want. All that can be uploaded through the uh, media library, which is right here. Add new. Uh, you can add it into the, into the media library and then just drop it into your pages. So I'm going to do that with images on these pages just to have some content. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go to the media library. Well, I'll do it. I'll do it two ways. Um, first, I'll go to the media library and go add new, and I'll add a piece, an image, into the media library. So I'll click select files. I'll pick this first frog here, open him up, and now uh, f1 frog1.ping has been added to my media library. Now, if I go to the library here, I can see that he's going to be the latest addition there, along with all my other stuff. Now, the other way I can add things to pages is just directly adding them to the pages. So let's do both. So we'll go to the services page. If I want to edit this, I can click on edit page up here at the top. This is my page. To drop in an image, I can just click before the paragraph that I wanted to appear before and click add media. It will either let me upload files or I can select things from the media library. So I'll select this frog here. Now, the things you have to do uh, in order to get this to appear where you want are you have to make some choices over here. So for alignment, you can choose left, center, right, or none, and that's uh, relative to the text. So I want this to appear on the left side of the text. You can choose how big you want it to be. Uh, I'll make mine medium size. You've got thumbnail, medium, and full size. And you can choose if you want to give it a title or a caption. The caption will appear on the page. So I'm just going to hit insert into page and now we see my big frog appearing over here. When you add media like this and you add it to the center 
the left or the right, the text will wrap around it, which is kind of a nice look. So we'll, we'll go update. We can, of course, uh, view this page by clicking the view page link here. And so now we've got a page with some content on it. Now, of course, I want you guys to make this look like a real website. So, you know, put images and text on there that look like they might uh, exist on a real site. Uh, okay, so now we'll go over here to the About page. We'll add an image to that, but this time uh, we'll add the image, not from the media library, but we'll just upload it from the computer. And of course, you know, whenever you're doing a demo or anything like that, things are invariably going to go incredibly slow and stop working completely. So here we are at that point where everything's going incredibly slow and not working. And while we're waiting, I'll go overhead over here and close this uh, Laura Mimpson page. And maybe I'll write my memoir and move to Texas and start a hippie commune. Um, okay, so obviously we're waiting for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause the recorder until this thing decides to come back to life. Okay, we're back. It was only a few more seconds. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on edit page. And... Um, what this is going to do is allow me to drop the picture right into the page. So here we are on the page. I'm going to go ahead and click before the paragraph I want to add the picture in next to. I'm going to click Add Media. Uh, this time I'm going to go to Upload Files and pick my second frog here. Click Open. That's going to upload to the site. Uh, this time I'll choose that I want it to be to the right of the paragraph. Uh, I don't want it to link to anything and I'll use the medium size again. And now he appears over here, and we just hit update. Every time you make a change, when you first make the page, this button says publish, the blue button, and you click it. And then uh, after you make changes after that, it says update. Okay, so there's our about page, right? So uh, now what we're going to do is we've got a gallery page. Let's see, uh, how many frogs do I have left? I have one more frog I could put on the home page, I think. Yeah, okay, so let's go ahead and put another frog here. Okay, and I could go down here if I want and put it uh, next to the second paragraph. Okay, and of course I went uh, out on the web and got these um, frogs, but of course you guys are going to only use copyright free images and uh, images you make yourself. Okay, there he is um, inside there, inside the second paragraph. Um, freeimages.com is a good place to get images and there's lots of other copyright free resources on the web to get images and video and other things okay so now i have some content on the home page on the services page i've got content on the about page all right so what about the gallery and the contact page well the contact page is easy we're going to use the contact form in there and um by the way, I've been, sometimes I do this, I, I, I have two tabs open, but I forget and I just kind of work in one tab. So I'm going to try and remember to use both of them because it's a little faster and easier. So this will be my front end. Once again, this is the back end where the um, dashboard is open. So uh, what I want to do now is uh, I want to look at my installed plugins. Uh, now I already did install Contact Form 7 and uh, I think we did that as a class. So but if you wanted to add a new plugin, you would just simply click Add New. And you could search through these featured ones or through the popular ones. Or just do a, a, a search right here. So, for example, you could say Contact Form 7 um, and do a search. And then it would show you that plugin. You could research it, uh, how many people are using it, how many stars did it get, when was it updated. And if it's not installed, it, it will have an active button here. You can hit install now. And then after that, it will come to a screen where you will have to press the activate button and then it will then it will work. Well, I've already installed this one, but there's another one that uh, I would like to install, which is called Next Gen Gallery, one of the most popular galleries out there. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that search. I'll click install now uh, so it can download that stuff to my... Um, computer actually will download it to the server where my uh, website is living so as you can see after you download it you have to click activate plugin and then it's active and ready for use um, okay so 
Next Gen Gallery, there it is, uh, showing up ready and active for use. Now, when we install the Contact Form 7, it puts this Contact button over here. You simply go over here to where it says Contact Forms. Uh, oh, it's not finding the page. That's very strange. Oops. Let's try again. Um, so let's see. Let me make sure that this plugin is active. Let's see. Contact form. Yeah, it's active. So if I click on contact. Okay, great. So um, this little piece of code here, it's called a short code. You can just copy that. It automatically makes a new contact form for you whenever you um, install that plugin. It's just a generic contact form. and I, So I can go to Pages and then Contact. And I can drop in this code. Once again, it's called Short Code. And uh, you know it's Short Code if it has these hard brackets around it. And that just calls the contact form. So I can hit Update. And then uh, I can click View Page. And you see I have a contact form there. Now, the contact form is working, but unfortunately, um, it will only send email to me at this point because I'm the one who created the website. So my name is what is in there. But if you wanted to send email to you and test it out, you go to your contact form section, click on your contact form, and then uh, here where it says mail, uh, go ahead and put in your email address right here and then hit save and what will happen is uh, from that point it will uh, send the mail to you from that contact form now this is just to test it out it does work it works perfectly but don't start testing it out unless you change this because I don't want to get all those test emails I do love you guys but not that much okay um, so we've got our contact form there it's looking good and once again, I'm just doing the, the absolute minimum I can on this site just to show you things. But you, you guys should feel free to go to town and make a really cool looking site. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to install maybe is a gallery over in the next gen um, using the next gen plugin. So you can see that there's a new gallery uh, button that's appeared here after I installed next gen. So I can say add gallery images. And I could say, okay, I want to create a new gallery. I'm going to call it Frogs, of course. I'm going to add some files. So I can just go ahead and I'll do these frogs here. Uh, I'll click Open. Uh, and then I'll say Start Upload. So what it's doing is it's uploading. Uh, you can see over here, as it uploads them, it'll say 100%. Uh, so it's uploading these different froggies to my gallery. Um, and making making a whole new next gen gallery there for me to use. Okay, so the first two are done. We're just waiting on that third one, which maybe it's already uploaded because this says 100%, even and that says 100%, even if though it doesn't have a little check mark. Oh no, it says uploaded two or three files. So I guess we're still waiting on some weird thing, or maybe it worked and we don't really know. Who knows? Anyway, um, so theoretically, I'm going to hope that this gallery is uploaded and we're going to go test it out. So the way you do that is you go to the page where you want to add the gallery. And so see, it says two, two images uploaded successfully. So it didn't actually upload all three. That sucks. I hate that. Okay. So let's say that the third one didn't work. So um, we can say uh, under gallery, you pick your frogs gallery again. You click add files. Let's go ahead and make sure this third one got uploaded. And you click start upload. And then, I don't know, it just pushed me off that page. So who knows what's going on? Maybe maybe life is smiling on us and it's working. Okay, so we'll go over here to the Pages section. We'll go to Gallery. And once you go into a page, you get this new button here, um, which, which indicates Next Gen, this green button. So if you click on that, it will allow you to drop a Next Gen Gallery into your page. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details of Next Gen Gallery. You can look at their support forms for that. But basically, I'm just going to use the default. I'm going to make a, a gallery that has thumbnails on it. It asks what you would like to display. And I, uh, I say, well, I want to display a gallery. And then if you click in here, it will bring a drop-down menu of all your galleries up. So mine, of course, is called Frogs. I can customize the display settings. I don't like showing the slideshow link, so I say no on that. Um, and then sort or sort of exclude images will let you take certain images and, and push them out of there. 
Now, once you hit save, it saves all your settings. It puts one of your thumbnails in here to show that you do, in fact, have a gallery. So then you click update, and uh, boom, there's your gallery. Now, let's go ahead and click view page, or, of course, I should have gone over here and kept that as my dashboard, but I forget. So now we go here, and we see our gallery. You see that it actually did upload that third image, and I, and I ended up uploading it twice. So that's just, you know what happens sometimes but you click on these images and they, they get big and then you know you can go back and forth between them like this and of course close them so this is a, a way to make an image gallery inside of uh, WordPress okay so now we've got some content on all of our pages um, one thing here that might be useful to you if um, here I'll go to the services page because I think this would be an appropriate thing for the services page if you ever want to list uh, a number of items um, like for example services you can use what's called a bulleted list and a bulleted list will of course put a little bullet in front of each item but it's a really nice way to uh, present information or you could have an ordered list which would be um, you know numbers for information so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to the um, services page I click the edit page link up here I'm just going to pretend that there's some services I wanted to list here next to the frog and so I'll just write uh, just put one word on each line and turn the whole thing into a bulleted list. So we'll start by getting rid of this paragraph here and uh, giving us some space going up here. And I'll say, so for services, I'll say uh, frog tossing. And then I'll just hit my enter button and I'll say uh, tongue wagging and eyeball roll rolls. Okay, so these are the things that we can offer your frog. So then you just highlight all three of these. Uh, up here, this button bar has all kinds of cool things that you can do. We can click here to make a bulleted list or here to make a uh, numbered list, an ordered list. Of course, you have uh, bold and italic. Uh, you can highlight a word and make it bold or italic or both bold and italic. Uh, this is alignment, you know, left, center, right. This is how you make a link. You just click on something click there and type the link in and it will it will become a link um, you have right here uh, heading tags so you can make something in its own paragraph or you can make it a big heading all the way down to a small heading we have underline here this will allow you to color text uh, you can clear the formatting HTML formatting these are special characters um, if you need to paste something in from Microsoft Word you can paste it right into uh, this using this right here you can paste it right in and we'll clear out any weird junk the word is put in this is undo and redo a question uh, keyboard shortcuts and this uh, this right here will open the second window um, the second row of buttons right this is a, a block quote uh, and a horizontal line um, so lots of lots of cool features that you can use in there um, so I've, I've gone ahead and made some changes. Maybe I don't want this to be bold, so I'll get rid of that. And uh, go ahead and update my page. All right, now let's talk about uh, what you can do with the um, sidebar. Uh, for right now, you can't really get rid of the sidebar unless you do some complicated stuff like uh, creating a new page template. The same is true of creating custom headers for every page in the site. That all is something that's going to happen in web design 2 that's where we learn about that stuff so I'm not going to go into that with you guys now one thing you can do with the header is you can upload multiple headers to your site and then click the randomize header function so like if I go under appearance and then header as long as you make the headers all the same size which is 1200 wide 1200 pixels wide by 280 pixels high you can upload multiple headers so I'll go in here to header image and see how there's this button here, randomize uploaded headers. I could go ahead and upload like six or seven different headers if I wanted and then click this button. And what it would do is every time you refresh a page, it would bring in a different header. Now you can't predict what those headers will be and you can't tie them to the individual pages, but this is a way you could get some uh, difference and some freshness happen to your pages in just this format. In the, in the second class, Web Design 2, I'll show you how to hard code that so you can have a different header for every page. And you can have a template that will ex expand all the way across here so you don't need to have your sidebar. But for right now, let's just uh, learn how we can edit the sidebar and what are called the widgets, right? 
So we'll go under Appearance and then Widgets. And what this is, is this is your sidebar right here. This sidebar area represents the sidebar and everything that's on there. And so there's a search bar. We, we can go back here and we can see there's a search bar and recent posts, recent comments, all this junk in here, right? Now that stuff can be added to or taken away from very easily. So the recent posts, we simply open this up and hit delete and it updates immediately. So if we go over here and now we hit refresh, watch this recent posts area, it's gone, right? So you can get rid of things very easily. We'll get rid of recent comments like that and they're gone. Now to add something, you simply grab whatever it is you want to add from over this section and drag it in. So for example, let's say that I wanted to add some arbitrary text right under my search bar. I could click on this text box here and drag it over here and I can say this is my text, right? Go ahead and save that. Or I could drop, you know, some HTML code that would link to an image or something like that. And now when I refresh, this recent comments is going to be gone because I deleted it. And there will be a little section that says this is my text right there okay so you can go into this widgets area you can explore around and figure out what all this different stuff is and what it does you can you can drag it over here to add it and customize it or you can open these up and delete things your meta is where your login is so be careful about deleting that if you do end up deleting it you have to uh, in order to log in you have to go to your website URL and then put WP admin after it in order to see the login screen so uh, you can do anything you want here as far as your sidebar, adding and subtracting things. Um, some plugins that you add will actually add functionality to this section. Like let's say you were looking to add a Twitter feed or a Facebook tweet over in your sidebar. Well, if you go into your plugins and you you know go to add new and search for a Twitter feed or something like that, you can install it in the plugins area. And what it will do is it will install a new widget here called like Twitter feed. And then you just take that and you drag it over here and suddenly your Twitter feed shows up on your front page in your sidebar. So you can experiment with that type of thing if, if you think that's something you want on your site. Of course, if you are going to use things like Facebook or Twitter, you're going to have to put in your Facebook and Twitter account at some point uh, in order for them to access that. Okay, so uh, of course clicking on your logo uh, is automatically set to take you to your home page. Um, and you can go to the individual pages and do whatever you need to there. Um, so this is sort of the bare minimum that we can do on a WordPress website to have a logo, a header, have multiple pages, and have content on each of these pages. Uh, we've added a few plugins like the Next Gen Gallery um, plugin there, which is doing a nice job with the images. We've added the contact form. You guys can feel free to experiment around and add more plugins. Um, at will and, and, and figure them out and, and what they do and, and make them part of your site. Okay, so um, that's about it for me. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this tutorial up. Uh, remember that um, we'll be able to uh, talk about this on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Any questions you guys have, I'll be happy to answer. And then the, uh, the final project is due on the 17th. Okay, thank you very much.